episode 15 of My Yarny Corner. My name's Alex and I live in Yorkshire in the UK and this is my podcast all about knitting and crochet. So welcome everybody. I hope that you're all okay and I hope that you've had a lovely crafty couple of weeks. I'll put all the information about where you can find me and anything that I talk about in the video will be linked in the description box below. So how are we all doing? How did we all cope in the heat wave? <laughs> I didn't cope at all. This today in the, in Yorkshire, it's raining, it's cold. Well, it's not cold, it's about 16, 17 degrees, but it's my perfect weather. This is what I like, but it's been so, so warm. I just spent the whole time moaning and just, I don't like it, I don't like it, I'm too hot. I must have got in the shower three times a day. But yeah, luckily in the UK, that kind of weather doesn't last long. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is we're just not geared up for it we don't have air conditioning in the houses we're just not geared up for hot weather and I suppose it's different if you're abroad and you're sat by a pool and you've got a bikini on or a swimming costume on and you don't have to do anything but in the UK it's just not nice so I hope it's cooled down wherever you are or if you like the weather then that's great enjoy so I've got a few things to talk about today. I've got one finished object, a half finished object. We've got some incoming goodies, some works in progress. So I'll stop doing the British thing and talking about the weather and just get on with the podcast. Um, should we start with finished objects? I did not think I would get this finished. You know what I'm going to show you, don't you? Ta -da! This is the Winter Lights Shawl by Stephen West. And I absolutely love it. I'm so pleased with this. So, so pleased with it. This is the back where all the floats are. All ends are weaving, woven in. It's blocked. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen this already on Instagram. But I just love it. I did use the Weaving Stevens method for weaving in the ends. And it was so much easier. I totally recommend that. So much easier. The only modification I made to the pattern is this section here should have had two repeats, but I just did one. The rows were just so long. And by that point, I was like, do I really need to do a second repeat? So I cheated a little bit and finished it early. But it's got an I-cord bind off as well. That took a while. <laughs> I timed it. It took about four hours. All the way along there. If you can hear the wind outside, I've got the window open. And it's just quite blowy. Hopefully the camera, the microphone won't pick that up. It'll be fine. But yeah. So that was the only modification. I've talked about the yarn before, but I'll just go through it again quickly. This is the Truly Rich Wool, which is commercial yarn. I used, I think I used about 75 grams of that. The brown and this purple one here, these two colours here, are both dye knit by Kate. And I've got a fair amount left of those. Let me show you. They were 100 gram skeins. And I've got probably nearly 50 grams of each left. It's all done in far ply. And the green one is green lambkin yarn. And I've got about the same of that left as well. I absolutely recommend any of Stephen West patterns. They're all just, they're all stunning. I'm already eyeing up another one, which we'll talk about in a minute. But this was my first one and I, I bought this at Christmas when it came out for the, was it the high bonnet along I did? And I sort of looked at the pattern and thought, I'm going to have to shut that window because it's, the wind's starting to howl just one minute. Sorry about that. Because I've got the bedroom window open and the hallway windows open. It was really starting to howl coming through. Anyway, so yeah, I bought this pattern as part of the Christmas make along that he did. And I sort of looked at it and thought, there's no way I can do that. Absolutely no way. But it has a tutorial for everything. I have not been stuck. Even the, this bit here, you do a, what's it called? A garter tab cast on or something like that. It's called, there's a video for it. It's absolutely fantastic. And it's so drapey. You can wear it as a scarf, which would be super, super warm which is really nice, but I really, really like it as a shawl because of the shape of it, it comes up like this. It just sits so nice and it doesn't fall off your shoulders. So on an evening when you're a bit chilly or 
like the other day when I was driving back. We'd been bowling and went bowling into Frankie and Benny's and I only had a t-shirt on. When I got back in the car, it was freezing. I thought, I've had this in the car. I could just drive back with this. Keep me nice and toasty warm. I just love it. Absolutely love it. So yeah, finally finished. And you don't get bored because each section is so, so interesting. I kind of, when I started this, I kept just stopping and thinking, wow, this man is just a genius. And then you've got onto another section. So that interests you just as much. And then you're onto another section. It's just absolutely fantastic. So I really, really recommend that pattern. So that is my only finished object this week. But it did take a lot of knitting because there was a lot of stitches on it. But I was on um, YouTube the other day and he's actually brought a new pattern out. I'll put a picture on the screen. It's called the quadrang Quadrangle Spiral. Quadrangle sp Why can't I say that? Quadrangle. I'll put it on the screen what it's called. And a picture on the screen of the um, shawl. I don't know why I can't say that. Um, that looks beautiful. You use a, a lot more yarn for that though. I think it's three skeins of the main colour, 300 gram skeins of the main colour, and then six 50 gram skeins of contrasting colours. So I'd need to get a lot of yarn to do that, but it does look beautiful. I sort of I was watching it thinking, oh my God, and it's like, um, like a schlanket sort of thing. It's oh lovely. So I'm eyeing up that pattern as well. But yeah, and I have actually just bought another Stephen West pattern. Now I bought this the other day and I know that so many people are making it. I, Needles at the Ready have made it. Um, I watched the latest podcast at the weekend and Kevin had just finished his which looks gorgeous. And I think Chevy Rell's going to make it as well. There's loads of people making it but this is it. Versity's Unite. So I'm going to give this one a go. The only problem I'm having is choosing the colours. Some of these sections here are striped, which I don't really want to do it striped. I love the effect of stripes, but I just don't like knitting them. <laughs> I don't know. I need to choose some colours. I haven't chosen any colours yet. I keep changing my mind. I've, had, I've got a bag here with all these in. These two are what I've got left from the other one, so I don't really want to put them in. I really like this one. See, them two would look quite nice striped. But I could go super bright. I've got this one. I think, is that a Twink Knits? Don't, it might not be, don't quote me on that. I love this one. I don't know. I need to really sit down and go through my stash and look at colours and decide how I'm going to do it. But yeah, it's one to start over the next couple of weeks. As soon as I finish the other one, I may as well. So that's that. My only finished object, but I'm really pleased with it. Um, what else have we got? My half finished object. Before we get into the half finished object, I must talk about my huge, huge fail. I showed you last time the socks I was making for the Green Lambkin yarn Christmas in July. And they were really pretty. I'll put a picture on the screen. I decided I wanted to make an afterthought heel. I'd got it in my head that I wanted to make an afterthought heel. They're not as easy as you think, you know. <laughs> so I made both socks and made them two at a time, which I do like doing now. Um, made both socks, did the cuffs, the, the toes, everything was fine. All I had to do was put in the afterthought heel. So I looked at a few videos and I ended up following the crazy cat lady one. The video was fantastic. It wasn't anything to do with, with her at all. It was all me. And as I was putting the stitches in, oh my God, I thought I'd got it right. When I went to cut the yarn, I hadn't got it right and I'd missed a stitch and it all just came out on both socks. I did it. I thought, it's fine. I've messed up one sock. I can re -knit that one and we'll try again. And I just can't do it. I just cannot do the afterthought heel. So I haven't got them to show you because I can't even look at them. I do have enough yarn to make some more of the socks and I will do. But I was so upset. I just... So, anyway, that aside, <clears throat> it's not as easy as you think. And I won't be trying an afterthought heel again. They were so pretty. And we won't do it again, anyway. So I've started another pair of socks. I've done one. I'm just doing these one at a time 
this is I've got the yarn somewhere where did I put the yarn I think it's in this one yeah Stylecraft Boho and the colourway Orinoco can you see that that's this I've made them shorty socks I do prefer shorty socks fish lips kiss heel and I absolutely love them I've even started the second one there's no point in showing you I've literally just started the second one so I, I am going to have some socks after my epic fail of the other ones but yeah really like these they don't take any time at all to knit because they're just shorty socks so I've started those so that is those, really, really pleased with those. I love how the colours come together. And I just do sort of almost an inch of ribbon, an inch between the ribbon and the heel. And it's just a standard heel and a fish lips kiss heel. But yeah, really like those. I can't wait till they're finished. I was looking on Ravelry actually the other day and there was another pattern and I saw it last night. I'll put a picture on the screen and I've written it down and it's called Creeks and Damselflies and it's by Nikki Ross Patterson. They are a free Ravelry download at the moment. I don't know how long it's free, if they're always going to be free. I'm not sure, but they look lovely. And the thing about these ones, it says in the pattern notes that you can make them top down or toe up. There's loads of sizes, up to 72 stitches, I think. And it goes right from four ply to DK as well. So it's it seems to be a really inclusive pattern. I'll put a link in the description box below to that pattern. And it's also got a Welsh heel. Has anybody heard of a Welsh heel? Never heard, never heard of that. So that'll be interesting. I'm going to download that pattern. We all know that I've never done a pattern sock before, but that looks really, really interesting. Oh, in my Ravelry hunt the other night as well, I also came across this pattern. Now, <laughs> I'll put a picture on the screen. This is Phoenix LFC and it's by Lisa Connolly Designs. This is crochet, it's not knitting. Oh my God, what do you think to that? That looks stunning, stunning. I think when I've done my Snoopy blanket, I think I'm going to cast that on. It looks amazing. It's... um. Well, how much was the pattern? I think it was about seven or eight pounds. You can see why, because it looks amazing. So I think I'm going to make that as well. I really, really like that. My Snoopy blankets, my Snoopy blankets getting there. I'll show you that in a minute. But yeah, that looks beautiful. And, and, talking of crochet, there's a new um, Harry Potter book coming out. I have, let me just go and grab it one second. I have this book. This is the Harry Potter Knitting Magic. And there's some absolutely beautiful, beautiful patterns in here. I haven't made any of them yet, but there's a crochet version coming out on the 17th of August. You can actually pre-order it on Amazon now. I'll put a picture on the screen, but oh my God, I want that as well. So that, yeah, that's the knitting version. I think I got this last year. I'm not sure when it came out, but in here, show you some of these patterns one without a chart on it it's got written patterns and charts I've got these gloves I can get the camera let's see those there's some absolutely gorgeous patterns in here it's a head wig This is Hermione's Time Turner sweater. There's some gorgeous patterns. I bought this one off Amazon. But yeah, I'm really excited for the crochet version to come out. It looks really, really good. So what are the works in progress that we got? Shall I show you the Snoopy blanket? Sorry about the rustling, it's in a, a big bag. It's in one of these big shopping bags that I bought from Tesco, so it rustles quite a bit. So, this is in the Crochet Now magazine, and this is the blanket here that I'm making. I think, oops, I'll just move my yarn out of the way. 
and try and get it the right way up for you. Which is the right way. See that I was actually I was down here last time you saw it. So I put quite a bit in. It's just getting now to the really easy section. I'm almost finished with this green, which makes it a lot easier. So there's not a great deal to see on it, but it's it's quite wide. And I'm still only sort of here. I've still got a fair bit to go, but it is getting much easier. I'm getting much quicker on the rows now because it's not quite as there's not quite as many ch uh, colour changes on it. But I'm really enjoying that. And last time I podcasted, I showed you the Mysterium tea that I had just cast on. I do have some progress on that. There's not a huge amount of progress on it. Which bag have I got it in? I've got so many bags up here at the moment. There's so much to show you. So. I wasn't sure when we talked about it last time how it was going to come together. Excuse, it's rolling quite a bit. So this is the front section and these stitches here are just on hold now. So this bit is where I cast on. So I'm just going to pick up some from this side and some from that side and then drop down to knit the back and then it'll join in the round. This is a picture of the pattern. it's actually working up quite quick although it's in four ply yarn it is coming together quite quick where's the oops this is the yarn it's cascade heritage and it's in a bordeaux colorway i've got five skeins of this i don't think it'll need five skeins to be honest and i don't know why that's all come out of its wrap i think i'll probably only use four but no, it's really, it's coming together a lot quicker than I thought it would be. The only thing I'm not sure is when I pick the stitches up, I've watched so many videos already, I need to have these ones, I think, already picked up. So when I start this side, I've got to pick them ones up first. Oh, I don't know. I'll figure it out. But then you are going to get this roll neck here. I'm not sure if that's going to bother me or not. And I'm not sure if I can put something on there to stop that roll. It might not bother me. Because it's not as big as I thought it was going to be either. Hmm. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I love the colour. Absolutely love the colour. And it's so soft. It's This yarn is... 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon, but it's super, super soft. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it comes. I'm showing you the back there. We'll see how it comes together. It's going to stretch quite a lot as well. It's quite a lot of stretching that. So I think when I block it, I did go up a needle size. The needle size should have been 3.5. And I went up to 3.75 because I knew... That was a tight knit. We've already discussed how I didn't swatch. I know this. I have done like a, a measurement in the bit that I've knitted, and it's it's not bad. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'm just not sure about that rolling bit there, but it might not bother me. Once you've got your these ones picked up, it's not going to roll that much. We'll see. So that's coming along. I just need to pick up stitches now on this side and then go down the other side and then join together to work in the round. But yeah, we'll see how that comes along. So that is that. And I do think that's it for works in progress. Is that it for all the knitting content? I've not got any more to show you. I think that's it for all the knitting content. It's because I spent so long on the um, on the Stephen West show. So 
we have lots of incoming goodies <laughs> to talk about today. I um, I did a swap with my friend in Canada, the lovely Sue. She is Distant Stitches on YouTube. I will link her channel below. She has an Instagram page as well. So we did a little bit of a swap. I sent her some yarn and she sent me a couple. She said she'd sent me a couple of things, but she sent me a lot more than a couple of things. She sent me this beautiful ball bag. Isn't it gorgeous? It's holding lots of minis at the moment, so just excuse me inside, but it's all beautifully lined. It's just gorgeous. So she sent me this. And she sent me some minis for my jelly roll blanket which I can't wait to put in that. I've not worked on that over the past couple of weeks. So that needs a bit more attention at the moment. But yeah, she's got all those minis, aren't they just gorgeous? So she sent me those. And that's not all. She did send me some sweets, which I've already eaten, so I can't show you those. So she said, oh, I'll send you some stitch markers. She sent me loads. Look at these. Where's my camera? She knows I love cats, so she sent me, I won't show you them all because she sent me quite a few. These beautiful, beautiful stitch markers. This is my favourite one. It says cat person on it. And then I've got some of these. That says beginning of round. I love this one. That says frog. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> So she sent me lots of beautiful, beautiful stitch markers. And she also sent me some things for you guys as well. So if I just get those on. She also sent beautiful, beautiful, I won't open it bag for you guys for me to use as a giveaway and this comes with beautiful stitch markers as well little ring stitch markers which are gorgeous so she sent me those and she sent me some she's from Canada so I have some Canadian yarn and this is Richard Delvries and I think that is the colourway is, is that the colourway Finn which I thought was really appropriate because my youngest boy is called Finn and this is 100% merino, worsted weight, superwash, 175 yards or 160 metres. And I have four of these. So I'm not sure what I'm going to make yet, but they're absolutely beautiful. I'll find something nice to make with those. So she well and truly spoiled me. So thank you so much, Sue. Honestly, just lovely. And that's not all. I also have another giveaway prize that was sent in. Jane, who is Mouse Knits and Crafts on YouTube. I talked about the beautiful project bag that she made me a few weeks ago, which is this one. I absolutely love it. And she sent me another one through the post and she goes, you can either keep it for yourself or you can use it as a giveaway. Now this has got cats on it, so you know that I wanted to keep this for myself. That I couldn't do it, so I'm going to use this for a giveaway as well. It's got cats on it, and inside it's all floral fabric. It's absolutely beautiful, and it's a drawstring as well. So that is another giveaway prize. You know where I'm going with this, don't you? <laughs> I'm going to have to do a giveaway. So I also have that. And that's not all the incoming goodies I've had. I did another swap with um, one of my Instagram friends. She's called Diane and she is Utree Yarn Craft on Instagram. Now, I need your help, guys, with this because she messaged me. I'm just going to take my yarn out of this so I can show you it properly. One second. She sent me a message on Instagram. And she said that she would like to send me a project bag because I've mentioned in my podcast, I think it was a week or two back, I didn't have many project bags. So she makes these project bags but does not have the confidence to open her Etsy shop. So I could do with help you guys with this to tell this 
beautiful, beautiful lady, how amazing these bags are. I mean, just look. How she has not got the confidence to open this Etsy shop, I just do not know. It's got a handle, ring pull. This smells beautiful. I think that's lavender. She's even got a little stitch marker on there. Inside, it's all fully lined. She's made a DPN holder with matching fabric that goes with it. And then inside the bag, I'll show you that there, there's a pocket in the matching fabric. Can you see that? It's all fully lined. They're absolutely stunning. Turn that around. I can't believe that she's not sure if these are good enough to open an Etsy shop. So if you hop over to Instagram and give us some love, it's, I'll link it below. It's Utree Yarn Craft and it's Diane. And I just think they're absolutely just beautiful. It's really thick material. I'm not sure. See, all the llamas are embroidered. They're not printed. I can show that. Can you see? They're all embroidered on. It's not printed at all. And this is really thick at the bottom, really sturdy, absolutely beautiful. So, Diane, if you're watching, please open this Etsy shop because I'd love to buy another one of these bags. And I'm sure that your Etsy shop will do absolutely amazing. It's just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at the detail here. It's just beautiful. absolutely gorgeous so I sent her a skein of yarn and she sent me this bag I keep looking at all the llamas because they're so cute this is my favorite one here this red one <laughs> this guy's just looking back like were you following me or something <laughs> this guy just looks confused he's not sure what's going on yeah absolutely gorgeous so yeah hop on over to Instagram and give us some some love on there because I think I think your Etsy shop would do absolutely amazing. So that is it for incoming goodies. Um, so where was I going with showing you all this? I've had two prizes sent for giveaways. And I've said, I did say the other week that if I would do a giveaway, it's going to be at 500 subscribers. Because I did two quite close together for some reason. It worked the way it worked out. But there's been quite a, new, a few new subscribers over the past couple of weeks. So thank you to the new subscribers for joining. And I just think, shall we just do a giveaway? Shall we just do it? So which one shall we have? I've got two project bags. So I think we'll start with this one. We'll start with Jane's. We'll do this project bag and we'll put a skein of yarn in now. I've got some of my yarn left over. This one, this one's blue suede. I don't really want to put this in the giveaway because if it doesn't sell on my shop, I want to keep it. I really like it, it's my favorite one. This is what I gave to Diane. I had two skeins of this and I gave her one and she really liked it as well. Um, we've also got this one. That kind of, does that match? Mm, it does match, doesn't it? Okay. Let me just skin that up. Right. <sighs> Excuse my rubbish skin, I'll do it properly though. That does match, doesn't it? So, let's have a giveaway. The winner will receive this beautiful bag from Jane and this skein of yarn from me. This is four ply, it's 100 grams, and I think it's 400 metres in this. Let me just pop that one back. So please nobody buy this in the shop, because I really want to keep it. If it's, if it's still in there in two weeks, I'm going to keep it. I haven't done a yarn update, actually. I wanted to talk about that. I'll get back to the giveaway in a second. I can't get any yarn. Um, the next delivery that people are expecting is the 4th of August, so I, I'm not going to be able to buy any yarn to dye until the 4th of August, so we're going to be a couple of weeks 
for the next yarn update. But I'll, I'll let you know, I'll keep you updated on the podcast. So, we shall do this. Yeah, we'll do this as a giveaway. So you'll get this skein of yarn and this beautiful project bag. And it does match quite nicely. So I'll pop that in there. And what shall we say? I normally just say, what would you make with the with the skein but you know what just say pick me in the comments if you want to be if you want to be in a chance to win those just say pick me in the comments and you'll be in a chat in with a chance to win those it's just gorgeous isn't it beautiful it's just beautiful i so wanted to keep it i thought she did say i could either keep it or use it for for a giveaway but she'd already made me one i couldn't really keep it it'd, it'd be really selfish of me which is beautiful, I love it. So leave me a comment below and just put pick me if you'd like to be in with chance to win one of these and I'll do um, a random Alexa picker thing in the next podcast. So yeah, we'll have a giveaway. Let's just have a giveaway. Let's just do it. Why not? We all need cheering up. Let's have a giveaway. So yeah, that is that. And I think, oh no, I do have one more thing that I want to talk about as well. Just one second. Got to make sure everything goes back in boxes because the kittens are still really naughty. I've never had such naughty kittens. They're into everything, absolutely everything. They keep getting my yarn and I'm sure they'll grow out of it. But yeah, <laughs> I also found another new podcaster. I haven't done Podshare for a few weeks because we all know that I got addicted to watching 24. Oh, and see how I get sidetracked so easily. Has anybody watched Anne with an E on Netflix? Oh my God, it's amazing. Oh, I think I watched it in a few days. Oh, there's three seasons of it. And I think each episode, well, the first episode's quite a long one. It's an hour and a half. And then each episode's about 40 minutes after that. But it's based off a book, Anne of Green Gables. And oh my God, it's just amazing. If you've not seen Anne with an E, go and watch it. And even... Like the artwork on the introductory part of the of the program. Normally I'll skip that bit, but it's just so lovely. Best thing ever. So I haven't done Podshare. That was all to say that I haven't done Podshare for a little bit because I've been watching so much on Netflix. But I have found a new podcaster, which I think you will all love. I've got her name written down. This is Tonya and her pod podcast is called Calm as a Stitch. And she's in, I don't want to get this wrong, which is the only bit that I didn't write down. She's in America, so I will just say the United States. She could be in Canada, I'm not sure. She's not a UK podcaster, but she's absolutely fantastic. Now, she does dye yarn as well. She's got some beautiful yarn. And her son joins in her podcast as well. I've been and watched all the back episodes like I do. I like to binge. Um, but she's got a lovely, lovely podcast and such a relaxing way about her. She was showing um, an illusion knitting pattern <clears throat> that she was making for her husband. Oh, my God. It's stunning. I, I've never done illusion knitting. I do have a pattern on my favourites on Ravelry. I've not been brave enough to try it but the one that she's she's uh, showing when you look at it straight on it just looks like lines but when you move it sideways you can see the picture it's absolutely gorgeous and she's also i've written this down because i can't say it without reading it the multnomah shawl she was showing that on the last podcast oh, wow it's absolutely beautiful so, yeah, go and check out Tonya at Calm as a Stitch. She's very, very good. Um, I'm not sure how long she's been podcasting. She's got a, a fair few episodes. Well, I'm saying a fair few. I think she's got maybe 14 episodes, I think, maybe. But, no, go and check her out. Absolutely fantastic. So, I think... I think that's everything. I think I've done it really quickly. I knew I didn't have a lot of knitting content this week because I've spent so long on the um, shawl. It's really raining outside. You know when you get the sideways the rain? It's like that outside. At least it's not hot. <laughs> um, so yeah, it seems to have gone really quick this week. But um, 
I haven't had a great deal of knitting. I've done lots of knitting. I've just not had a lot to show with the epic veil of the socks. And <laughs> But leave me a comment down below if you'd like to enter into the competition. If you don't want to enter into the competition, still leave me a comment. Just don't, pick, don't write pick me. And I will get all the names together and we'll do that on the next podcast. Hopefully by the next time of podcast, we should have August Fair as well. I've got a little idea coming along, but I haven't started it yet. Um, I didn't, I kind of got the idea. The 1st of August is Royal Air Force Day. So I've kind of got this idea of a bear, you know, with the... Um, the old fashioned flying caps with the goggles. I kind of want to do one like that. I'm not sure if I've got the skills to do it. So we'll see. If I do that, it's gonna have to be a bigger bear because I don't think I'd be able to get all the details of the things that I want on a tiny, tiny bear. But we'll see, we'll see what happens. Hopefully August bear will be on the way by the next podcast. And then I really need to work out what I'm gonna do with all these bears. I'm just looking at them all up there. They're taking up quite a bit of room. Yeah, I need to work out what I'm going to do with all those bears. Anyway, I'm wittering on. I'm really sorry. It's been a bit of a jumbled up podcast this week. If you're new, it's not normally so jumbled up. And if it's really jumbled up, I'll just re-podcast tomorrow. It'll be fine. Anyway, have a lovely two weeks, everybody. Stay safe and I'll see you all in two weeks.